Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the House Academy Show, entertaining real estate investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about appointment setting. Not so, like your dentist, <laughs> not like your doctor. <laughs> yes, this show is all about when to do appointments uh, around your business. No. Sorry. Here's my synopsis of appointment setting. Right. The same thing that motivates a person to set an appointment with you to come on over to see if you're going to buy their house is the exact same reason that anyone sets an appointment or walks into a check cashing business. So if you walk into a check cashing business, you hand over your check, vast majority, if not everyone on this call is not going to do that. That's not our socioeconomic thing. But they want their money right now. So if you if somebody handed you their check and they said, okay, in three uh Three days, I'll let you know how much I'm going to get, money I'm going to get. They'd walk right out. I like that. Yeah, could you imagine if you walked? That's true. They walked in and it's like, yeah, yeah come back in three days. <laughs> and I'll let you know how much I'm going to give you. Yeah. <laughs> I might change my mind. Especially when you come back and I'm like, oh, sorry. Did I, did I say 10%? Take, I'm keeping 20%. Or you walk back in three days and they say, who are you? You're like, what check? Yeah. <laughs> Before we get into <laughs> Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the houseacademy.com online community. It's free. You know, that's a classic example of you and I off in the corner, like in a boring party, cracking yeah. up with, you know, like what are they talking light about? beers in our hand because that's all they have. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still having fun. Yeah. <laughs> all right. John asks, how do you know what properties have mortgages on them? Excellent question. Until recently, you didn't. You had to guess. In fact, if you're going to send out, we've been sending out offers to owners for almost 20 years. Okay. Well, more than that, actually. But until recently, you just kind of like swung hard and hoped for the best. <laughs> That's how I played golf. Yeah. And you'd send everybody an offer and it'd come back and then you'd have to find out what's in it. And a lot of, so recently um, with the, with data tree, you can very simply weed out which properties have mortgages and which ones don't. And not only just positive or negative or true or false, how much the mortgages are. And yeah. what percentage of uh, of the, the current principal as a percentage of the current value? So, you know, we send out prop anything below 70% loan to value, we right. tend, they tend to get a letter from us. Uh, there's another possible, there's another model for just sending out mortgageless property, which we also utilize, but it's not really for this show. It's a great question, a great simple question. Very hard. This is a, what, number one of the reasons, like, I can't stand driving for dollars and stuff. It's like, yeah. you don't know anything about this property True. with the mortgages. What the situation and like, yeah. is, it could have just so bought silly. it. And, they, and, they're, and so you're really not even dealing with the, the owner of the property, which is the bank kind of thing. It's another know. reason I can't stand people who just go buy lists. I just right. read on our community. I'm like, say, somebody was asking. Really? Just this, Somebody's just asking. I'm oh. not ready to join the group. I need a place to buy some cheap lists. Oh, no. And I need owner and address. That's it. Sorry. And I'm like, man, I really... Not in the right... It's just not, not how you right. do this. Yeah. Save up your... You're going to waste so much money yeah. on now. Wait and do it right. Yeah. When I used to do that, our calls, I used to do a lot of the inbound sales calls to join like Land Academy. And I would tell them if they're in this position, it's, it's not the right time. Yeah. Hey, do nothing. You should... And even like right now, as you're listening to Hand House Academy... Be a fly in the wall. Get into our online community for free. See what our members are doing. You know, there's lots of right. Listen to you're listening to the show. You should be doing this for six months to a year sometimes, if that's what it takes to get you to save up and be in the right place. So you can jump in and do this right. We're not going anywhere. That's the best way to do this. Totally. Thank you. I just decided that because you and I can't get this straight yet between Land Academy and the <laughs> House Academy show, we should just call it Hand Academy. Hand Academy. <laughs> <laughs> on both shows. Oh, that's good. That's House, House and Land hand, Academy. Hand Academy. And, and then like we don't the, have to worry about it. Like the Buitt family of companies. <laughs> we really think about it. You know what that is. <laughs> there we go. Today's topic, appointment setting. This is why you're listening. This is another one of those, just like yesterday, ultra simple two-word concept uh, that I think in my silly little anecdote about check cashing is so overlooked yet so important. Go ahead, Joe. I know you have a lot of notes. So appointment setting, what is this talking about? This is this is the seller calls you back um, or you get you get a signed offer back in the mail, whichever it is, or an email. 
and you now need to get this ball rolling and you need to get that first appointment to meet with them and and start this purchase process. So what you want to do is A, do it right then and there. Every time that you're talking to them or leaving a meeting with them, you should be planning the next step. So let's just say they called you in, they called you back and said, "You know what? My wife and I got your offer 3 weeks ago. We've been sleeping about sleeping on it, talking to the kids." Nobody wants a house. We're ready to do this. Um, and we do want to start the process. And they usually don't know what it is, too. They're like, they'll ask you, what is the next step? And you say, you know what? Thank you very much. When can I come over? I need to get eyes on the house. We need to schedule the inspection and get the purchase agreement from you. And then there you are right there setting that appointment. And while you're at that appointment doing what you need to do, as you are leaving, you need to be setting the next appointment or follow-up call, or whatever it is. You always have to leave them with the next step. So that's my thing number one. Number two about appointment setting is don't let too much time pass. Don't say, well, the got the inspector coming on uh, a week from Friday, so I'll get with you, I don't know, what, the Wednesday after that? Oh, that's way too long. Right. You, you can't operate like that. And I know, and this, is, this should be another topic on another show that we'll do in the future is how to get a good house inspector and, you know, it only takes a few and you figure out who the right guy is and he loves you too and knows how you operate. Yeah, exactly. And he knows that when you call, you're going to want it within three days, man, like 72 hours, I got to have this done kind of thing because that's time kills deals. We talk about that a lot. So anyway, don't let too much time pass. Uh, number three, don't miss any of these appointments, by the way, too. Be real careful. Make sure when you say, I'm going to call you on Tuesday. It's not the day you happen to be on an airplane because you're going to London that day and there's no way you can get to a phone. You be realistic. Look at your phone and make it accurate. Put it in your calendar and follow through. And then finally, when it's appropriate, if there is a little bit of time, say the, the quickest you could get your inspector is on Friday and you're meeting them on Monday and you've called everybody. You have three that you use and that's the best you can do. Then I would like you to also do reminders like, hey, just a reminder, do it on Wednesday. Uh, I confirmed to the inspector he's going to be there at 9 a.m. on Friday. And then Thursday afternoon, one more time, just like, hey, just a reminder, he's coming tomorrow. If you have, if anything comes up, let me know. Uh, I will be available tonight. And, you know, just a, just a little something so they know that you're you're there and you're because you're working for them and with them. And you want this to go smoothly and easy for them. That's That's really it, too. Let me, I'll finish on this. The whole point of what we're doing here is to, we're building the trust, having yeah. the communication with them. Establishing trust. We want them to buy from us, and we want to make this easy for them. Never talk over their head. Make this hard. Just should be very easy. The inspector's coming, you know, and the day and the time. And and if it's a little old lady and she's going to be there alone, I want you to be there with them too, by the way. Make it that you can show up. You you make this whole thing easy for them. So they want to sell to you. I mean, I can't, there's nothing I can add to that. Thank you. I, I just think time is so critical. It is. Uh, most of the, I know that we have other members who I do consulting calls with and the real successful ones, the appointment gets set that day. They, they block out from three or four o'clock on in their schedule every single day right. in anticipation for at least two appointments. Mm -hmm. So it's imperative. And, and if it's not you and you're not in the market, you're, you're a little bit more advanced and you've got somebody representing you, boots on the ground in that local environment, they need to be available for that. Right. Completely available. Exactly. It's imperative. If you let even one day go by, it's, it, um, a lot of things the can change. Yeah. Once, you get the, once, you, once they're warmed up to the thought that they're going to sell their house, if you are not on it, they're going to start shopping and going, you know what? Yep. I just saw uh, that sign on the corner. I'm going to call that guy. Exactly, Joe. Hey, we know your time is valuable. Thanks for spending uh, some of it with us today. Join us next time for the episode called Age is No Barrier for House Investment. This ought to be good. And we answer your questions posted on our online community at houseacademy.com. It is free. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I wrote that title for uh, me. For you or for me? For me. Okay, good. Age is no barrier. Thank you. I appreciate it. Meaning that. old people can do this. <laughs> and young people. We have people in our early 20s mm -hmm. and we have people in their 80s. That's true. Group. That's true. That'll be fun to talk about. 
wherever you're listening or wherever you're watching, please subscribe and rate us there. We, we are, are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.